All right, so it's like 8 p.m. right now, and about four days ago, it was on Thursday, now it's Monday. Uh, my car was having problems between my first and second class at school. I ran over to Duncan, and during the drive, when I was in the drive-thru, I noticed it, it like hiccuped. Got that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that idle kind of hiccuped. So, anyways, I was in the Duncan drive-thru, and then the idle kind of like jumped up real quick and then went back down so i didn't really notice anything like i didn't really think anything of it too much and then as i was driving back to school uh it started backfiring like absolutely insane like way louder than it ever normally does and the gas mileage has been has been worse than normal for like the past two weeks and uh i kind of thought it was a leaky injector and then when I parked it at the school, the idler just kept going. My bad. The idle just kept like rising up. It's supposed to set at 600, but it was kept rising up. So I definitely have a bad injector. So, so uh, four days later, finally made time, and I'm gonna get a tow truck to tow it back to my house. And I'm getting Index 12 injectors shipped to me tomorrow, and uh, they were used off Facebook, but. They're index 12, so they, they should be fine. Um, better than mine. I, I had index 10s. But, um, yeah, so this video is pretty much just going to be it getting towed and then us figuring out the problem and hopefully fixing it in this video. So, tow truck guy's on his way. T minus 20 minutes. Here she is, all lonely. She's been alone for like Jacking. four days. Kind of jacking up. You get it? There she goes. Later, dude. Total. She's total. Come on, total game. On the total game. On the total game. Oh, please tell me some on the total game. All right, so we got the beam back home. When it first happened, that you could definitely hear that the idol wasn't like. It wasn't idling right, like it was all off time. And you'll hear it hiccup every once in a while now. Like before, this was like, kept rising up, which was weird. So. All right, so the next time this video will pick up probably be when I get the Index 12s, which will be anywhere, from like probably, probably by the end of the week, I'll get the Index 12s. And then we're gonna, got it. And then we're gonna put them in and hopefully it solves the problem. I think it will. So, see you guys when I get the index 12. See you guys in the next video. <laughs> see you guys in the next video. So it's a couple days later and I just got the index 12s in the mail. Here they are, so I'm gonna go ahead and open. Now they are used. Now I can smell the fuel already, but they are used. But I picked them up for a fairly good price and they are low mileage. Oh, it smells like straight gasoline. There they are, index 12s. It's hard to see right here because it's out of focus, but index 12s. So unfortunately I cannot install them right now because I have school and then work. You have to program them into the system and I don't have the software to do that, but I know somebody that does, so I have to figure out whenever he's free so I can get him to, to program them into my car. Um, but yeah, so I guess I'll just pick up this video whenever I'm installing them. All right, so I already went ahead and put this, uh, the new seals on three other of the injectors, but I still have to do on these ones. All I did was cut the old seals off with a razor blade, and then these are just like a plastic thing, and they got a special tool that you're supposed to buy to expand the plastic o-rings seal things but uh it's like 60 or some dollars so i looked it up on youtube because i'm a certified youtube mechanic you already know that but literally you just use a socket and like a pen cap i'll show you real quick all you gotta do is take the seal put it on the pen cap because if you try to fit this over the injector like without expanding it at all it will not fit because they're too small 
So pretty much all they do is when you put it into the bank, it expands. So pretty much all these seals do is when you put it in the bank, it'll expand. So it, it seals it properly. So you just want to put it in channel locks. So pretty much all you're doing is putting pressure down on, on the seal to expand it. You don't want to go too far, but you know, just a little bit and then you'll hold it there for a little bit. And then what I do is flip, I flip the seal over because it'll form to like the pen cap. So this side will be wider than this side. So flip it, do the same thing, and then squeeze it on there, this over top, and then all you, all I've been doing is using scotch tape because I don't have any electrical tape, but all you want to do is wrap it really tight and then keep it on there until you're ready to put the injector into the bank. So pretty much all I'm doing is putting the seals on these and then taping it really tight until I have to go put it into the bank, and then obviously I'll remove the tape. So yeah. So I got it on there. I know it's a little bit blurry, but you just wanna push it down into the groove right there. And then just take tape and then go ahead and wrap it. I don't know if this is an efficient way of doing it or the or a good way to do it, but I guess I'll find out. But I just wrap it really tight on there. And then just make sure that the tape is tight on there. Yep, so that's all I've been doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the other two injectors. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the injectors. Oh, then I'm gonna go ahead and put the injectors in the car. And then uh and then I know a guy who does the, the programming. He has ISTA D or Ryan Gold or whatever the program's called. But pretty much that's where you enter the spray patterns into the into the ECU and then it knows the correct spray pattern for the injector so everything works. So like I said I'm gonna go ahead and get these done and then put them in the car. It is so cold. Now I'm playing musical cars. Now I'm playing musical cars so I can get my car in the garage. I'm gonna move two cars out of the way to get my one car in the garage. Whipping the daily right now, full of freestyle. The transmission on this car is like completely destroyed. But you know, it's all good. All right, now we're in the beam. Here goes nothing, bad fuel injector start. All good, all good. Oh, I got like no gas in this thing. This is leaking. All right, time to put the injectors in. Got the setup now, I got the freaking fireplace in the beam. This is super cold though. All right, so pretty much, you don't know how to do this. Uh, I know the lighting is awful. Let me fix that real quick. All right, we're good now. All right, a little bit better. So pretty much all you wanna do, if you have the stock cabin filter cowl, you just wanna go ahead and remove that. It's just a bunch of eight millimeters, one here, one here, and then like eight or so here but I have the Burger Motorsport cabin filter so pretty much deletes all that so you want to go ahead and remove this and then I'll show you what you have to do next and all it is is just three allen or four allens one here one there one there and then one down there all right the engine covers off now next step all you got to do is pretty sure these are 13s I'll verify that in a second but you want to go ahead and remove these fuel rails all six of them so remove from the right side of the block and then the one that directly connects to the injector just want to go ahead and get the rails off and i would advise using like a rag or something because there's still going to be there's still going to be fuel in the lines so yeah just watch out for that so it's actually a 14 millimeter so you just want to go ahead and use the open hand open hand open hand so it actually is a 14 millimeter so you want to go ahead and use a open ended wrench why is it not in focus Anyways, 14 for all of these, the rail. And to make it easier on you, you want to go ahead and remove the, or not really remove, just the O2 sensor wiring is in this kind of little uh, tab here. You just want to go ahead and just lift these out of the way. There's two of them here and here, so you get more access to get those out. And another thing I would advise keeping your keys far away from your car or unplug the battery so that way your fuel pump never kicks on and starts sending fuel to the fuel injectors because if you don't have the fuel rails on, obviously it's just gonna leak into your engine, so you don't wanna do that. So definitely 
keep your keys away or unplug the battery. All right, so I got all the rails out and it smells like straight 91 right now, but you want some kind of way of organizing them. So this is one, two, three, four, five to six because they are all, they're all formed to fit in a certain way. So you can't really mix them up at all. So next thing you want to go ahead and do is remove the clips that sit on the left side of the injector. So it's got like a little bracelet kind of thing. I don't know how any other way to explain it, but it's got a tab on the right side of it right here. Just want to go ahead and pry it out. And then once you get the little bracelet tab off, you just want to pull this out and it'll come out fairly easily. So you just want to go ahead and do that for all six. Uh, I definitely recommend unplugging the battery because like I said earlier, if you have the key around it, the fuel pump will turn on. So I went and I had my key in my room upstairs. But when I opened the door, the fuel pump kicked on. I'm dumb, I didn't even think about it, and they started spraying, which is great. Now there's gasoline all over my engine. But, you know, I'm just gonna have to clean it and hope for the best. So I did go ahead and disconnect the battery. So, should be good now. All right, so once you get these tabs out, I'm gonna pry out on that, and then pull up on this. I can't do it with one hand, but you know what I'm saying. So do that for all six. All right, now that I got all the connectors removed next thing you want to do is remove these bolts right here uh, I know it's a Torx bit but eight millimeter works perfectly fine so there's one for every two of them so one here two and then three over here so you just want to go ahead and remove those in order to reach this bolt and pretty much the fifth and sixth ejector you're gonna have to remove this strut bar so you just take a flathead here spin that tab off comes out then you just want to go ahead and loose take that out and then take this one off and then it slides you just gotta pull it towards you and it comes right out so it's a 12 mil and a 14 mil up there and like i said you just pull this towards you and then it's out all right so here's my first injector that i pulled out and all you really gotta do for these is they sell like a 70 dollar tool that you screw on this and then pull it out but all i do is grab this little Grab the little top part of it and pull it out. And I mean, some of them are going to be hard to get out, but I mean, if you work with it enough, it'll come out with that. You just kind of wrestle with them until they all come out. So that was the first of six. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of them out. Yeah, so I got them all. I got all six out, and it's pretty easy to tell which one went bad on me. All five of these aren't that bad, but this sixth one, I know it's going to be hard to see. It's all kinds of corroded and. There's like few all over it, so I'm sure it was leaking, which led to it failing. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the index solves in there, but you wanna make sure that you know which injector is going to what bank because you wanna get the numbers off the front of it of the spray pattern. So that way when you when you code into your ECU that you have the right spray pattern with the right injector. So something you definitely wanna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop the index 12s in. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the tape that was on the seal and then put it right into the bank so that way it won't expand at all. It'll fit to the bank um, like it's supposed to. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in and then assemble everything. And I really hope this fixes my problem. I think it will because I'm pretty sure the six injectors what went bad, but I guess we'll see. If I got all six back in, my camera's about to die, but I'm just gonna tidy everything back up, put it all back how it was, and then the dude who knows how to program, <clears throat> the spray patterns is coming over, and then hopefully my problem will be fixed. Cause I gotta hold a beat. It's already recording. <laughs> All right, so I just got off work and came over to uh, see what's happening with his car, and he told me the, the the camera died halfway through after the guy came to. Uh, he programmed the injectors. Yep. So, and we're about to go to test drive to see how it's running. Yeah, we're gonna data log on MHD. So, we can see if it's all good. Hoping it is. <laughs> Both? Yeah. Go. It's logging. Why 
why are you going two miles an hour? Dude! Oh, lost some tracks in there. Yep. You saw that? Yep. I didn't saw that. I forgot that. Alright, so pretty much that's gonna end this video. Um, as far as now, it's running fine. I have to check the logs. Um, I did one pull while logging it on MHD. So hopefully it's all good to go now. Um, if it's not, then I'll up and load another video. Part two. Part two of why not to buy an N54. Um, but yeah, so the Index 12s hopefully, hopefully fix the problem. Uh, it's really easy to do. Next move is coilovers. Black Friday. Black Friday coilovers. Friday black coilovers. Over coils. Black Friday. Black Sunday. No. Alright, that's the end of the video. <laughs>